because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up about it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm here with the big man himself, the new English heavyweight champion, yeah. Solomon Dakers. So, talk to me about that. He talked a good game all week, but it seems you came out on top there. Yeah, you know, all week, you know, I built it up. You know, he was um, trying to get into my head, but cool, calm, collected, and I knew the work had been done long before this uh, fight week came along, and I knew what I'm capable of. So two rounds, got the job done, got the strap, get out of here. We talked about the stoppage then. I mean, you landed some very, very crisp shots. Uh, he was still standing, but he was looking to hold on. It looked like the, the, the corner was about to throw the towel in, the referee stoppage. In your mind, correct decision? Yeah, correct decision. You know, sometimes I'm in there throwing my punches and I can't see it from the outside. I knew he was hurt and I wasn't going to stop throwing. I was just going to keep going. You know, I was landing multiple clean shots to the head, you know, and it only takes a couple more of them from a heavyweight to, to cause some damage. So, right decision, I imagine. He made emphasis to the fact that he's had three fights at the press conference. He had three fights as a heavyweight, had two knockouts. You've had five fights as a heavyweight, had one knockout. You've managed to get uh, Esme out of there in two rounds. Is that the stoppage is going to start and come now? Because it seemed like he was also saying that you were looking to paint a pretty, paint a pretty picture on the back foot, but you seem to want to stand and trade with him. Yeah, I don't know what that's about. Maybe because you know I'm a good boxer, I'm going to be in and out of range, moving forward and backwards. I'm not a plodder, so um, I think he was trying to entice me, say I'm going to run, so I'll just walk straight at him. But still took my time, you know, put, kept the pressure on, let my hands go when the time was right. I mean, I've listened to your interview with Jamie there. You, you were talking about English. British, the traditional route to get to that world title. Now you've got the English strap, the next strap is the British and the Fabio Wardleys. I spoke to you at the beginning of the week that you're in that mix now with the Fabio Wardleys, the Fraser Clarks, the Johnny Fishers, the David Adelaide's. I mean that little crop of heavyweights there, that British domestic level is a, it's a badass bunch of people man. So it's, it's it, I mean Fabio Wardley's got that British, I don't know what, what he's going to, he probably wants to defend it again, but, and you've got the English, does it make sense? Yeah, it makes sense, you know, we're both in match room. I'm sure Eddie Hearn, you know, he loves to put on a fight and he, he'll, he'll love to get, you know, his two match room fighters for the British title. But, you know, like I said, I've only had six pro fights. I'm ready to take it, see what my team thinks, and um, we'll just go from there. But um, I'm ready, all guns blazing now, just keep marching on and going forward. I mean, like I said, that little crop of heavyweights is a, is a dangerous crop of heavyweights, man. You're, you're, you're all winning, you're all knocking people out. And one heavyweight I did miss out, who's from the same area as you, different promoter, mind you, but he is from the same area. And I spoke to your manager, Adam Morley, about it, is Big Fraser Clark. Now, there is that history with the GB squad and all that sort of stuff, and you are from the same area. Does that interest you? Yeah, I think me and Fraser is going to be a really big fight because, you know, me and him have been the two top amateurs in this country for, you know, for the last five, six years. You know, it was me, me and him one and two on the GB squad for, for a few years. And it makes sense. It's going to be a big fight. It's something that's going to get built up, you know. And me and Fraser, you know, I sparred Fraser in, in the build-up to this fight, you know. And, um, you know, I know Fraser well, but me and him know that it's going to be a big fight when me and him do cross. And uh, it's something that's going to happen. It's boxing, you know, you're going to fight these guys. And... Um, it's going to be a really big fight, so you've got to build that up. You've got to build it up, so that, does that mean there needs to be a bigger title than an English title on the line? Maybe the British, maybe a European or a French world title for that fight? Yeah, that sort of fight. It's, it's not an English title fight. It's a, it's a big British title fight at, at the minimum. Um, you know, and, you know, he's an Olympic medalist. You know, I'm someone that was very capable of, you know, uh, just missing out on the Olympics. I could have got a medal if I'd gone there with my ability. And um, that's at least a British title fight and uh, probably a good classic, but... We'll see how far down the line because um, at the minute, you know, it's useful that we're sparring each other because there's not many heavyweights local. So the sparring might have to stop soon and um, we have to get it on at some point, maybe in the next 12 months. Friends become your enemies, like thing? Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, you know, I want to say friends because, you know, you can't have friends in, you, in your division. Roy Jones Jr. said it. He said, I can't have friends in my weight class if I want to be a world champion because I might face any of them. But, you know, they're good guys, you know, nothing against them personally. But we know when it's boxing, it's fight time. So that's what we do. Being Scottish, I'm starved of big time boxing up in Scotland. And the Midlands is almost the same. Big time boxing is 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 unheard of in the Midlands at some time at some point. But two big heavyweights from the Midlands. I mean, is there, what what arena? What what arena can you sell out there? You're exciting me, man. You're <laughs> exciting me with all this talk. To be honest, you know we can have it in Birmingham. We've got the um, the NIA. We've got the um, Genting Arena. You know, big arena in Birmingham. You know, and that's something that would be great for me, fighting my hometown, you know, and uh, it's really exciting thought, but for now, we've just got to keep chipping away and it will come. 
to be honest, Rob, I'm excited myself talking about you and Big Fraser, to be honest. I mean, uh, yeah, one final one, talk to me about the crowd. The crowd was against you, but I mean, did you use that as fuel going in there? Yeah, you know, I block those sort of things out, you know, it's, it's here or there. That's his guy, he's a local guy. They're going to cheer for him, you know what I mean? I don't take it personally. Anyone was in the ring, they do the same thing, but got in there, got my job done, you know, I keep my 100% focus. These things don't phase me, and it's just another thing, experience that I've got going forward, and... Um, you know, I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Good, and um, we enjoyed the watching ringside. Nice. So, congratulations again, big man. Thank you. Refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up about it. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. Win it, they're guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt ring. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day, 